Hi, I'm Morten Nielsen from the WASP team, and now I'm going to demonstrate how to generate input data for the wind farm assessment tool by WASP Engineering. And there's a little collection of sample files here called WATCH Samples. And there's this uh, Tunu project where you can have uh, some input data for, for this here. And here is a WASP Engineering project, uh, which I can open. Uh, in fact, I have already done so. And it looks like this. Here are 10 uh, sites in a, in a small offshore wind farm between Jutland and some uh, smaller islands. And uh, if I'm going to work with uh, a terrain assessments, it's not so relevant for an offshore project. Then I go here and click on the elevation grid and I right click on it. And then I can uh, save that file uh, or the, the elevation map to a file. So. I should uh, always do that. But here I'm just going to select the extreme wind climate and all the sites and the hop height for the turbine, which is this one I know. And it's important that I select the right one because there's formally there's no checking that it matches. So that's uh, your own re responsibility. So having selected these uh, three uh, objects here, then I go to tools and select prepare data for what and then I get this menu here uh, it's asking for a mean wind atlas because it's also uh, making a call for WASP to get some mean wind climate data uh, for for this uh, sites in the wind farm so I go here and uh, find this wind atlas uh, relevant for for this wind farm and uh, then it's asked for a map in in the format prepared uh, prepared for or preferred for for WASP, uh, in, but it always has it in this project here. But if it it isn't, then you have to select it yourself. And then it asks which turbine, and I know that this is this uh, Vestas V39. And uh, then because it's an offshore. Uh, project, then I select this uh, check mark here wind speed dependence water surface roughness. It means that the calculations are repeated for different wind speeds because the roughness of the, the sea will change. Normally, you would not uh, want to put a check mark here if you're uh, on land because uh, then the calculations take longer. And then you can store the information in, a, in an Excel arc or you can also uh, store it in an, an XML file or uh, just uh, uh, write it to a hidden file and then a launch watch. But I, I think I'll just do the Excel file here. So then I click here and then the calculation should start. And uh, it will take a while and uh, then uh, it's it's going to, to write to an Excel port. I ever already have another one open. This is what it's going to look like when it's finished. So we have um, uh, for each turbine side here, then there's uh, extreme wind. And then uh, for each sector here, there's uh, some uh, mean wind statistics taken f or predicted by WASP and uh, some uh, speed up factors. They're pretty boring here because it's totally flat. Uh, then there's some uh, data here for for the wind shear and turbulence intensity and flow inclination angles, which are also close to zero here. And uh, because I selected this um, uh, repeated for different wind speeds, then there are more uh, for, for different wind speeds here. But uh, normally that would only be for one wind speed because in WASP then it's a linear flow model and it would normally predict the same turbulence intensity for all uh, wind speeds. And all this is repeated for all the turbine sites and uh, when this is complete then you can uh, save it to, to file and then later we can use it in the wind farm assessment tool. 